Hello everyone, I'm Yotam and I hope you're having a great day today because we're gonna do something fun, something a little bit different. In fact, we're gonna be reviewing my new super cool keyboard, the Yamaha YC61. This is gonna be a honest review, I bought it with my own money and I'm gonna tell you straight to the point what I like about it, what I don't like about it, what it can and can't do. We're gonna review some sounds, including some special sounds that I made that I think you're gonna find really, really, really cool. And in addition, I'm gonna show you some accessories that I bought with it, for example, the panel, the stand, and the case behind me. On a side note, I'm not gonna be focusing too much on the technical aspects, for example, polyphony and sound chips, because I'm a musician, not a technician. Thus, I'm gonna be focusing on the feeling of the instrument, both in terms of physical touch and just using it, and in terms of sound. Speaking of which, here is the CFX Grand Piano Sample. Now I'm going to be playing a couple of more bread and butter basic sounds such as Rhodes, Wurlitzer, organ, etc. After which I'll give you my honest impressions about the keybed. Now let's talk about the keyboard action. First of all, specifically when it comes to pianos and electric pianos. If you think that these lightly weighted keys are gonna feel as good as a hammer action mechanism, you're out of your mind. That being said, the semi-weighted action 
of the YC61 is amongst the best I've ever played. Certainly, I would prefer this to an Nord Electro or to any Casio or Korg or even Roland, honestly. Maybe the Hamold SK Pro had a more substantial feeling as far as I recall. It's been a while. But there's nothing to complain here. Yes, you would need to make adjustment when playing piano and electric piano. It takes some time, but if you're a good player, if you're an experienced player, you need to be able to make those adjustments because you're gonna be playing on many different kinds of keyboards, depending on what you own or what the venue has. So again, I like that the action is quiet, it's controllable. Moreover, when it comes to organ, I had absolutely zero trouble performing all the related techniques. For example, the glissando is very quiet and enjoyable. The, the keys don't hold up against you. They're just like butter. You can just smear it all over, back and forth. And yes, I know that the key trigger point is not as shallow as a real B3, thus you don't have uh, contact points and the squabbling sound is not as realistic. Okay, for me, the experience is still very, very enjoyable and it does everything I really need it to do. Now let's move over to the more interesting and unique sounds that I created myself. Don't expect atmospheric pads, just a working keyboardist sounds and stuff that you can actually play with piano-like. <laughs> By the way, this sound is a great example of how you can use the little modulation lever to control the volume of the second keyboard module. So you have keys A and keys B and an organ, and I can bring up the volume of the keyboard B of the pad whenever I want to. Now, this is very useful because I don't see any reason to ever save one singular sound. You can always save two sounds and the one is basically without volume and you can always bring it up as you need. The only reason not to do that is when you need the modulation lever for something else like vibrato or filler cutoff, etc, etc. Now to my impressions of the synthesizer and miscellaneous sound section of the YC. All in all, it is lifted from the montage that came out in 2016. But, and it's a big but, 
the newer YC series has a much better DA converter. So the sound is fuller and more pristine, even though they're basically using the same synthesizer engine architecture, almost the same. Now to the FM part. In my opinion, the FM sounds amazing. I own the montage, I owned the original Yamaha DX7. I actually compared it between the two. And for your information, the DX7 is almost the same. It's like 95 to 97% the same. The envelopes are a bit different from the old time FM to the new FMX. And also, of course, the DAs and other computational stuff that's being done a bit differently makes a different sound. Still, it sounds great. For the AWM, for the analog stuff, I'm not the biggest fan of the Yamaha YC or Montage, by the way. In my opinion, I still would prefer a virtual analog like Yamaha just released in their new Montage or, you know, Nord and Korg has better sounds, synthesizer, analog style sounds, that is. In terms of the acoustic sounds like the guitars, the strings, the bells, whatever, what have you, Yamaha is, in my opinion, still the best by far. Maybe Korg comes second, but nowhere near Nord and Roland, which I think just don't sound as good in the guitar department and in the other acoustic sound categories. <laughs> Thank you. 
The organ is by far my favorite feature of the YC. It sounds great, the rotary sounds great, and you have just enough variations to cover everything you'd ever think of, from Hammond to transistors to FM experimental sounds, you know, modulating the oscillators with each other, using huge reverbs and distortions and creating pads and new agey stuff and avant-garde stuff. You can do whatever you want with this. I also like the draw bars because they're high quality. They even make this rickety sound when you pull, pull them. And of course, you have the lead, which is good when recalling presets. So why did I buy this keyboard anyway? Well, I also have a Kawai ES120, which is this big 88 key hammer action digital piano. It's very heavy for me. I use the bus and the metro, I don't have a car, thus I need something transportable. The YC61 coming in at 7 kilograms, including the case, the pedal, etc. and the cables, it is 10 kilos, maybe 9.5. It's perfectly transportable, it has a small footprint, I, I'm having so much fun taking it to gigs, to jams, and not having to break my back, and it sounds great. Now, here is the pedal that I've been using with the Yamaha YC61. It is, in fact, a Roland, Roland DP10. And the reason I love it so much is because it is the only one, as far as I know, of, that has this rubber. You see, it just retracts like that and it prevents it from slipping when you're playing. About the stand, I'm using a KM table style keyboard stand. The last thing that I wanted to show you is the case that I bought for the YC61. This is actually the case for the CK61. It's significantly cheaper, but it has several advantages. Obviously, the price is a big advantage. Also, it fits perfectly. It has maybe two or three centimeters of space, but you don't feel it. It also has convenient shoulder straps and a compartment to fit in the accessories such as the pedals, the power cables, etc. This case is padded enough. I actually walked with it in light rain and nothing happened to the keyboard, nothing even got wet from the inside. So you can be confident in purchasing the CK61 stand for the YC. And in all honesty, it even weighs a couple of kilos less. This is like one kilo and the uh, significantly more expensive YC case weighs around three or three and a half kilograms. So again, I only use the Metro and the bus. For me, every single gram is crucial. Now, if you have more questions about advantages versus disadvantages, let me know down in the comments. But in the meantime, here's a slide of what I think to sum things up.